Good morning. How are we all? That's good. The day of the Lord is always good. Mind you, the day of the Lord is every day. Amen. And welcome to those people. This YouTube, you know, is a great thing because I had some people come around home the other day and they were saying, what goes on in your church? And I said, well, I can tell you and I can show you. And we pulled up YouTube and there they were, all of us. And they said, well, that looks like a bit of fun. And I said, it is. So there you go. What a great thing. So people that are going to watch us on YouTube, greetings to you. And uh, we hope you enjoy the meeting the same as, as we do here on a Sunday morning. Now, the flowers this morning are from Helen Thompson. And Helen is uh, thinking of her brother, Campbell, and her mother, Olive Birthday. So thank you very much for that. Now we have a visitor amongst us. Heather Wilson has her... <laughs> I'll say the jokes. <laughs> Heather Wilson has her brother staying with her at the moment. So welcome, Noel. Now, Noel is all the way down from Maryborough. That's a nice trip, isn't it? Yeah, nice place, Maryborough. Now, you would have noticed that, uh, that Gary is not here this morning. Uh, Gary's not too well. Um, he's not uh, feeling too well at all. So he, uh, he's uh, resting at home and uh, he, uh, he had naturally has Gary with him and Gary's uh, not here this morning either as he's uh, attending to the looking after of, uh, of, um, of Gary. Did I say Gary or David? Yeah. David, okay. All right. We know him, yeah, yeah, okay. It's opportune that we're coming into a time of prayer for, for a year. And I think what it is, is it's, it's very opportune that we look at the world today and we think, my goodness, if ever a world needed prayer, they need it now. And we need to pray from today, if we haven't already been doing it, for the war-torn war world that we're living in. We think of those people that are in, in amongst all this, that are, it's not their doings, and they're, they're suffering greatly. So I know that if we offer our prayers to them, that the Lord will look after them the best that uh, is possible. Up in the foyer, you'll find that we have some, some uh, daily devotional books. They're there for you to, uh, to take, so please, uh, please take advantage of those. And, you know, I never read this before, this kid's zone. I tell you what, I'm a person that likes all this stuff. I'm going to take one every week. <laughs> Have you ever read through it? Yes. Yeah. They are fantastic things. My goodness me. I wish I had young grandchildren, but I'm sure if they're like me, they'll want it anyway. They are fantastic. And they're out in the foyer there or they're in your newsletter. So certainly uh, feel free to take one of those. They're, they're great. I'll just sit over here and read that. Maybe. <laughs> Our news, I read the newsletter, this, well, I read it the other day online, but there's a wealth of information in there too this week, so certainly read your newsletter and pick up on the, uh, on the news and the, the functions that are on during the, uh, during the next week. We have uh, morning tea this morning, so certainly feel free to duck out the back and have a cup of tea. And uh, those of you who are joining us for the first time or visiting today, certainly feel free to come out there and, uh, and have the uh, social gathering of a cup of tea. Thank you very much. God bless. Thank you, John. Thank you for that good plug for KidZone. Uh, we had a few over. Uh, so I thought I'd put some in the newsletter for you to have a look at and there's, uh, there's some good stories in there this week and I think uh, you might like to read it and pass it on. So uh, there's a special announcement today and that is about a fire evacuation drill. Now sometime today, closer to the, the end of our meeting, there, we are going to have a fire evacuation drill. 
Now that means that we've all got to leave the building. The building has to be completely evacuated. And I'd like us to do this uh, carefully, patiently and safely because uh, that's important. Okay? So there'll be a sign will come up on the screen and uh, I will make an announcement. It will be uh, closer to the end of the meeting than the beginning, so relax for, you know, 40 minutes, and then uh, I'll let you know what we'll be doing. I'm going to do that now. So if you're a parent, uh, Melissa and Leanne will be leading the children out of Kids Church, um, and they know what they're doing, and the kids just need to follow them up to the assembly area. Now, we all know where the assembly area is, don't we, in our church? We drive past it if we bring our car into the car park. And uh, I've saved four uh, witches hats over there if nobody's replaced them and thought their car was more important. Um, and uh, so I don't want you to be out in the sun for too long. And for those older folk, like me and older, um, we've put the awning down. Um, I believe, and, uh, and if you're on a wheelie walker or you're in, in a wheelchair or you're a little bit slower now than you used to be, um, you can go just out the, that front door um, and out to under the awning and that'll make it easier for you to just uh, wait for five minutes while John and Bill go through the building and check there's no one hiding under the toilet seats or somewhere and that we can put our hand on our heart and say that we have completely evacuated the building and we can now go to morning tea. Okay, so we won't be coming back in here unless you've left your wallet and, your, and whatever else in here because uh, you don't have to take all your handbags, boys and girls, um, it, but you can if you like and uh, we'll be then going straight through to morning tea. So that's a bit of a heads up and uh, the band will be sitting on the platform by that stage. So uh, it's more important that you get your wife out for safety, uh, Aussie, than your euphonium, okay? <laughs> I just, I, I didn't have a chance to tell him that beforehand, okay? So, uh, so, uh, and, and just for the record, once someone goes out of the building, you're not allowed to come back in. That's kind of like uh, a bit of a rule. And um, someone will have to fill in uh, Ivan Lang. And it's always nice to welcome Ivan. Um, let's give him a hand. Hey, I can do that. I've known Ivan since I was 17 years old. Oh, boy. <laughs> So that goes back a bit, doesn't it, Ivan? It certainly does. So um, this exit here um, will be a fire hazard, so uh, we're not allowed to go out of that exit. And, uh, and so the uh, evacuation drill, when it is completed, um, word will get around. There'll be four people in white hats. One is the YPSM, Melissa. One is John Drayton. And one is Bill. And one, I've got one under my seat here. So not a time for conversation. It's just a time to evacuate the building. So you can have your chats outside and, uh, and just do it as, uh, as swiftly as you can. But don't rush. Um, just queue up for those going out. And uh, more able-bodied people go out of this door here or out through the man room. And uh, that'll be a very easy exercise, I'm sure. We, you know, we haven't done one for years, apparently, and we're supposed to. So it'll be a good thing. And uh, thank you for your assistance. We will be reviewing all the things that happen uh, in our senior leadership team meeting and improving on the situation. And in my time, we'll never have another one unless there is a real fire, OK? I can promise you that. So without any further ado, where's my meeting plan? OK. Great. Ruth sends her love and um, she'll probably be back next week. Um, not that she ever needs my approval, but as she was getting ready this morning, I felt it was better that she stay home. And you know, it took her two seconds to agree with me. 
I, I've, never, I've never had Ruth agree with me so quickly, ever before. So isn't that wonderful? So without any further ado, um, you did such a good time last time that I've got you back again and you're going to lead a song for us. But you know what? We took part, four of us, in a march on Friday and, um, and it was a, a march against the, uh, the way in which uh, sometimes women, but men also, are treated in domestic violence. It was a big march, wasn't it, Sheila? And all credit to Sheila's daughter, Michelle. She was one of the main organisers. And there were hundreds of people there. And you know who turned up to march? Thelma. <laughs> and I reckon that was, that was brilliant, because my legs were starting to hurt walking up the hill. Even though it's only little in your car, it kind of gets you in your calves, doesn't it? But a great opportunity to witness to the fact we've got to say no to domestic violence. And, uh, and that's, that's the message, isn't it? So, thank you for coming. It was... There you go. Well, this is a word that we're going to have for this song, number eight. And the first word is come. And I came too quickly, but never mind. <laughs> That's a bit like it. And um, very soon we hear that uh, Keith's going to say, come and evacuate. Then That's what we're going to hear, isn't it? Yeah. But do you know that in the song of number eight, it says another come. But I was thinking of a, a song that I heard a long time ago. It was come to the saviour. Do you remember that song? And then there's another song that says, come in, my Lord, come in. You came to the Saviour, you asked him to come in, and now we're going to sing this song, number eight, come, let us all unite to sing God is love. What a lovely song to sing this morning. Thank you, Bandmaster. We'll sing the first two verses. <laughs> together and then we'll sing it. Thank you. Everybody together with the third verse. How happy is our portion here. God is love. His promises and spirits cheer. God is love. He is our sun and shield by day. Our help, our hope, our strength, our stay. And he will be with us where? All the way. God is love. And we'll sing the fourth verse. Thank you. Lord, I praise
because you came to the Saviour, he is our sweetest portion here. If so, you are not alone. Take a deep breath. There is hope. Whether you feel overwhelmed or simply want to learn some new money skills, our free ebook, You're the Boss, is packed with practical tips. Here are just a few to start you on your path to financial wellbeing. Tip one is that connection counts. While buying things can lead to debt and regret, healthy connection with friends, family or community can add great joy to your life and doesn't have to cost much or anything at all. Tip two is deal with debt and don't delay. If you are struggling to make a payment, talk with your biller as soon as possible because there are options. And if it all feels too overwhelming, remember, you can contact a Money Care free financial counsellor to support you. Tip three is all saving is sensational. When it comes to saving, every little bit counts, giving you peace of mind in tough times and the chance to reach your goals. Financial stress can have an enormous impact on our mental health, overall well-being, and relationships. So why not start today with just one of these simple tips? You have nothing to lose except stress and worry, and they're things we can all definitely afford to live without. The last week finishing yesterday was Andy Poverty Week. I'm supposed to introduce myself, I'm Samantha. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. So I asked Keith for the opportunity to share about any Poverty Week, and this year, the focus is on your path to well-being. I think this is a brilliant perspective they're taking on that because when you think poverty, you get a picture in your mind, and you perhaps think, "That's not me. That couldn't be me." Where in actual fact, um, through my student placement at Money Care, so financial counsellors, we see people in financial distress that are on 20,000 a year, less than that, 200,000 a year. So your amount of money actually isn't the full story. So I think this is quite um, a positive take they've taken on it this year. So right now in Australia, there are millions of people who are anxious about where their next meal will come from, worrying about how to pay their rent or mortgage, fretting about clothing their children for school, afraid their electricity or gas will be cut off. Each year there's a poverty um, study or report released and it found that one in eight people in Australia, so over three million Australians, live below the poverty line. That's one in six children, 761,000 kids below the poverty line. Below the poverty line meaning they can't afford basic needs. Yeah. May this year, three quarters, three quarters of Australians re reported experiencing distress financially. Picture three quarters of this congregation. Picture three quarters of our community. It could happen to anyone, particularly now we've got the interest rate rises, mortgage rate rises, and cost of living expenses. So what's the difference that Christian faith can make to our well-being in times of financial stress? I'm just going to check the slides. Oh. So God's word reminds us that we're shaped by where we focus our attention and time. And God has provided a range of people and resources to help us live well in his world. Because well-being is not just about your finances. Even in the hard and difficult times of life, there are things we can do to improve our well-being. When we focus our attention on good, positive things, this can shift our mood and feelings. So we're going to go through five practical steps to help well-being in times of financial stress. All right, we're going to come back to that one. So first of all, I'm going to give a plug to Money Care stuff. <laughs> Money Care have got, as you heard in the video, the You're the Boss program. Uh, ebook. I'm hoping because I know many in this congregation won't be able to access that, that we perhaps can get a list of names and I can contact someone to get printed copies for those that want it. And there's also planning for the unplanned. So these are both books that you can work through. One's more of a workbook style and the other has stories, real life situations and what you can do to prepare for the unexpected. They have great resources. 
you can come and see me if you want to have a flick through and then leave your name if you want a copy. But outside of the finance side of things, because well-being is not just your finances, spend time noticing God's good gifts in creation. So uh, somebody probably closer to a screen, can you read Matthew 6? Good perspective, isn't it? Connect with supportive people. So Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of, of Christ. The people around you it could be your supportive people. They could be friends, neighbours. If you don't have supportive people around you, reach out. Um, I'm sure we can help connect you in with one of the many groups in this church. Yeah, having a coffee a conversation with a listening friend is valuable. And reflect on God's word and promises of hope. Uh, anyone would like to read Romans 8? Stress and poor mental health can shrivel hope. But we know that God's word, as Robin just read for us, says that nothing can separate us from the love of God. It means that nothing, nothing at all, can separate us from that love. Take time to med meditate on God's mercy, grace, generosity and love for us can put our financial stress into a different perspective. It doesn't take away the financial stress or pressure but it reminds us that our worth and value is grounded in God's love for us and we are not alone in life. And finally, God has provided us with trained, qualified people that can help us in difficult times. If you need help, particularly with mental health help, go to your doctor, you can get a mental health plan and access bulk billing people to talk to. I'll skip that one. These are some things that we can do um, to think about this time of year uh, for any poverty week. So pray for, be generous to those in need. Advocate for ending poverty uh, through your local, state, federal, polit political representations. I'd like to put a plug for a, a assignment I'm doing now. If you know of anyone immediately who is struggling because of the housing situation and Centrelink payments, can you let me know because I'm writing an advocacy piece to do with that. Um, you can invite doorways or money care worker to share stories at one of your groups here. Perhaps we can see if they can... Me? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, or you can visit Salvo's money care worker. The number there is on the screen and we can get it put in the newsletter as well. Um, we've got a few slides with the responsive prayer. If I say the blue ones, can you all join in on the black ones, please? Loving God, thank you for loving, caring for, and valuing each of us. Protect and provide for their needs. Help them to seek support. Generous Lord, you have created a world that is rich and full of life. We thank you for our doorways and money care staff who work to support people in our community. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, everybody.
Samantha and Matthew, could you come and help me, please? Um, now, that was very serious, wasn't it? I'd like to thank Samantha for sharing that with us because um, um, poverty is not just about finances. Sometimes it's about other things that we don't have. And you can have money but not have other things. So it can, it's good to know that there are people out there that can help us. Um, so, first of all, we're having a cushion drive. Yep. You all remember why are we having a cushion drive? Mini Musos. Mini Musos. When's it starting? 9th of November. What time? 9.30. What day? Thursday mornings, 9th of November. Thursday mornings, 9th of November. At 9.30? Now, Mrs Tatters, could you come and help me, please? Ooh, she's in trouble. While she's coming, um, Matt, what's on Friday night? Youth group. What's the theme? A murder mystery. Ooh. You're not actually going to murder someone, are you? Okay. <laughs> Can you imagine the insurance and risk assessment? <laughs> okay, Mrs. Tatters, now that Mini Musos is starting, what's going to happen with Bible study? Oh, yes, we're not too sure yet. I'm going to speak. Well, later. I've heard, you might not know this, I've heard that they're um, fitting out the kids' church room with all the things that you're going to need for Bible study. So where Kids Church Room is, it's going to be all kitted out so that you can do Bible study in there. Does that sound good to you? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, what? No problem. Oh, yeah, new piano, everything you need. Everything you need is going to be there. Even if it's in my way. No, kidding, kidding. No, you need to stay because I still need your help. Okay. Um, I, th I don't need this anymore. All right. Did you get my email during the week? Yes. Oh, good. Just checking. They didn't answer. Uh, Roylene, are you here? Could you come up and help me, please? So today, it's a very exciting day, we're starting the year of prayer. In case you hadn't heard, we're launching it. Okay, now the young people, if you want to, you would, I would love for your help. I need someone to get some things out of my hat. Do you think? Oh, yep, they're here. Right. Now, I thought that it would be a good idea, oh good, James is here too, I thought it would be a good idea if we would start talking about prayer a little bit, because sometimes the adults kind of have this secret about prayer, and they kind of know everything, and as kids, we might not know everything about prayer, and we might have some questions, yeah? I know, you're really keen, hang on a sec. So, we know that prayer is talking to God, did you know that? You didn't. Oh, well, now you do. So, prayer is talking to God. But these, I have some questions that people have asked me about prayer before. And I thought these very intelligent people and very experienced Christians could help us. Now, Matt, you're up here with a bunch of women. <laughs> now, I did ask some blokes, some other blokes to help me. But they're either not here today or they didn't feel they were up for the job. So, you've got to represent today. Okay. Okay. Now, they have a challenge here, these guys, because I challenge them one word or a sentence, okay? They're not allowed to answer long sentences. So if you're sitting there thinking, I know a lot about prayer, why didn't Mel ask me? Might be because I don't trust you to say less than a sentence. Okay. All right. So, Naomi, do you want to pull a question out first? You can't look. You've just got to pull it out. All right. Do you want to read it? Do you want me to read it? <laughs> well, then I'll read it. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Now, you can put your hand up if you want to answer this one. Do I have to be quiet when I pray? No one wants to answer that. Matt's going to answer it. I don't, I don't think so. Oh. Similar. <laughs> Excellent. Three words. That's his winning. Okay. You don't think so. God might not hear you if you're too quiet. Pull one out. Thank you for opening it for me. I'll read it out. Do I have to pray out loud? I don't. You, you don't pray out loud? Oh, okay. They're very good at being brief, aren't they? <laughs> so God can hear you even if you're, you don't say it out loud. Oh, okay. Must be Alana's turn, is it? Do 
Do you want to read it? Do you want me to? I can? Okay. I have trouble sitting still. <laughs> can I move while I'm praying? Ooh. Royalene's going to do this one. You can dance, you can walk, you can do whatever you like. Mm. Oh, I like that. That's a good answer, isn't it? You don't ha- I make them sit still when we pray in kids church. Actually, I don't, do I? You can move. You just have to you just have to be quiet. Okay, whose turn is it again? I think it must be Naomi's. Oh, you got two. You've got to put one back. There you go. This is a good one. I'm going to ask everyone this. Where do you pray? So where do you like to pray? In bed, you like to pray in, bed? in my office, or anywhere. Okay, Mrs. T. Yes, and uh, I pray when I'm ironing, uh, when I'm sleeping. God wakes me in the garden, anywhere and everywhere. Thank you, Lord. I pray when I'm driving the car. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. <laughs> um, you don't close your eyes, do you? No. <laughs> don't you? Don't have to close your eyes when you're praying. Especially if you're driving, okay? Okay. I bet there's a lot of really good um, kids' worship music playing when you're driving too, is there? Yeah, Mum, she said she drives when she prays. Oh, didn't you? You've got extra ears and everything. James, you want to pull one out? We're very, very particular. <laughs> oh, this is a good one too. Can I read it? No? <laughs> you hold it and I'll read it. Is there a secret code word I need so that God will hear my prayers? Oh, oh. Mrs. Tatters has an answer. No, there isn't. Just any time from your heart to pray and speak with God because he loves us to commune with him. He loves us to talk to him, which is wonderful. So I can just say whatever I'm feeling. Wow. Cool. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Okay. Uh, I think it must be Alana's turn. Oh. <gasps> I'm going to skip that one because I don't like it. <laughs> I know I wrote. I'm going to skip that one too. I think there's a better question in here. That I'll, uh, there's a specific question that I want to do. Oh, hello, Mia. Are you going to come and help me? Maybe Mia will be able to pull one out that's really good. I'm, I'm not. We're not doing very. Here we go. What have you got? Oh, do you want to read that nice and loud for everyone? Can I only pray in church? Can I only pray in church? Well, I think we've kind of already answered that, haven't we? Because these guys pray everywhere. Yeah. Will we give Mia another turn? Because she's only had one go. What do you think? Does that sound okay? So here, I'll hold this one. You pull another one out. This will be our last one, I think. Mm, I know. It's all right. There's, that's the last question anyway. Can, can I tell God when I'm feeling angry, sad? Can you tell God if you're feeling angry or sad? Anyone want to answer that one? <laughs> Ab- absolutely. That's, the, that's probably the most important time you need to pray. Oh, okay. So we don't just pray when we're happy and we want to tell God good things. Oh, Okay. Was, has that cleared some things up for you guys? Yep. Yeah. Matt answered it. He said, yes, absolutely. He's the only one because that was a pretty good answer. We don't need any other answers, I don't think. Okay, so the kids are going to go out to kids' church. We're going to do things a bit differently at kids' church today. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you, can you guys sit on the blue mat today? 
Oh, can you remember that? You'll find it, okay? I'll see you on the blue mat. All right? You guys want to head out? Yep, bye. Well done, Melissa. Thanks, guys. And all your little helpers and uh, bigger helpers. Thank you very much. And uh, there's some real truths about prayer, isn't there? We're going to be waited upon for our, uh, for our offerings now. And uh, the chosen piece is, Lord, I pray that I may know thee.
Thank you, Ben. Thanks, Ozzy, for picking those words. It all just fits in, doesn't it, with what um, was said earlier from Melissa and her helpers. We're going to sing a song now, and it's song 873. Jesus is my saviour, this I know. He has given peace to my heart. When my soul was burdened, filled full of woe, there, there it is. Let's be upstanding as we sing, and the band will take their place in the congregation. Thanks, man. Jesus is my saviour, this I know. He has given peace to my heart. When my soul was burdened, filled full of woe, sinking from my sin to part. Graciously help me when I prayed, drew me to his riven side. There by faith I washed and so was saved. His blood was there applied. Oh, that's the place where I love to be. The mighty wonders there I see. Oh, there be with me. At the cross of Jesus. There I came to Jesus, bound and stand. Liberty. Sin. Really, he gave it, and oh, so glad was my heart then made by him. Fairest which had found me, he destroyed. Blessed is the spot to me, where I am to thank him, overjoyed to find my soul was free. if you know how long it takes to form a habit. Okay, one at a time. Not long. 21 days. Doesn't matter. You do? Okay, well there's a myth. Someone's recently done a study that uh, has taken the 21 days and thrown it out the window. Okay? Now, we've learned over the years that it takes 21 days to form a habit. But um, there was, there was a, um, a, a Mr. L-A-L-L-Y, a Lally's study, that they found out that it takes uh, 66 days, to be exact, to form a habit. Do you believe that? No. no. How about... 18 to 254 days. That's what the study came up with. Some people are different, you see. We're all different, aren't we? Some of us walk around when we pray because we can't sit still. So that's... Um, I went to a, a, a... When I used to work for the Bible Society, I used to go, Ruth and I, 
uh, used to go to a different church every Sunday and um, the different ways in which churches prayed was, was quite astounding. Um, we went into the minister's office which was quite large in this Pentecostal church where we were asked to speak and um, we marched around and stand before the meeting and uh, prayed and asked the Lord, called on the Lord to come down and bless the congregation. Well, he did. Well, I didn't think he was that hard of hearing. Um, but see, we're all different and there's different ways, uh, different um, denominations have uh, different customs. But if we were to form a good habit, um, probably a bad habit, yes, is quicker to take up than a, than a, a good habit. Sometimes when you're teaching uh, children to play an instrument and you're trying to get them to put their fingers on the top of the valves, um, that's not easy because every now and again they seem to slip down and then the valves don't work properly. But I wonder if we can liken a habit to the way in which we pray. Now personally, I was very, I've been very challenged by Karen and uh, we, we interv I interviewed Karen last week who went away for a 12-day silent retreat and a time of meditation. Now, we, some of us go like this and we think, well, we couldn't do that. That's, we'd never last two days or, the, <laughs> or night time. Four, what time did she say? Four in the morning, was it? To nine o'clock at night. Silent retreat. And some are sitting there looking sublime that, oh, if only... Well, look, if you're an if-only person, do it. Do it. Plan. Plan to do it. Because the good things in life, if we don't plan, they don't happen. They don't happen. That big sign that we had up last week about if it's good enough, we've got to plan and we've got to make it happen. Well, the year of prayer, that we've got prayer cards here. Have I got a microphone somewhere? Or did Melissa take it with her? Um... Anyway, I'll grab this just to show you that we ordered... Oh, thanks, mate. Hello? Testing? So <clears throat> I decided to order half a dozen of these um, prayer packs and uh, on the front, on the front you'll see that there's a year of prayer, prayer cards that have been designed by the Territory for us at $4 each and $4.50 if you want the little wooden thing that falls over when <laughs> you put it there. So that's why it's up against... Oh, there we go. So you get the gist. Now that's on the front page and how many weeks in the year? So we've got 52 cards that start next Sunday. So we launch it today. Next Sunday is the beginning of the week of prayer. Now, I don't know what happened in the first information that I was given because I, I told you that Queensland were organising the, the season of spring. But New South Wales and the ACT um, eventually are organising that. And if you are able to get onto the prayer website... Um, which has been made up specially for the year, the Year of Prayer uh, website and the Facebook page. And if you can't, well, that doesn't matter because you can have these and I've organised, it's very practical today, I've organised for you to write down your name and if you want a set of cards and if you want a wooden stand, tick that and don't worry about the total because we're going to buy them for you, okay? Okay. So this will be handed out at morning tea for you to put your name down. But I didn't want to order 50 of these and then we only use five. If you want to use it, it's there for you. And I'll show you what I've done. Ready? This is a swap over. Back to here. Now we're all different. Some of us like journaling and we talked about that last week and we passed these out. I've got more here for you if you want it. And it doesn't have to be journaling. It can be taking notes out of a Bible verse that you've read if journaling scares you, okay? So that's over there. 
Now, I've got a book that I've had for quite a while, and I liked the book. It was in typo. You know typo? The, been the typo? Yeah? And this is what it says. It says, this book is for long list making, procrastinating, uh, uh, sarcastic comments, weird dreams, deep dark secrets, doodling, unpopular opinions, computer passwords or profanities. And I've named it a year of prayer. I've converted it. I've converted a typo book of profanities into a year of prayer. So what I've done is I've got the first page here, okay, and I've got the second page, a year, week one. And here we are, John 1, 23. John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord. And on the back of this, because I've got two packs, I'm the core officer, and it says here, I photocopied it actually, <laughs> I'm a miser. Okay, it says here, pray and discern God. What are you asking of me in this journey of prayer? Pray and discern, read the scripture aloud. What new thing do you notice this time? And then activity, spend some time today finding wilderness, finding wilderness, which is in the, the Bible reading. How does that make you think about God? Now, I haven't stuck the rest in like I'd planned to because when I do write notes, I tend to some weeks scribble more than others and so this is ready for the next week and then I'll start week two. And this book is going to be quite interesting by the time I get to the end of this time next year. Now, on the back here, I've got in this little typo book that you can get from Typo at North Lakes if you wish. It's a little pouch in here. Look at that. I didn't even know it was there. And then I found it. And I've put in there words of encouragement. Every now and again, and I won't embarrass anyone here, but I've got two lovely cards here. I'm starting to collect them. And I won't read it to you, otherwise I'll start crying. Someone's actually said something nice about me and thanked me for being in the officer. Isn't that lovely? And there's another one here that uh, is to Major Keith and Ruth. And that's on behalf of all the soldiers, adherents and friends of the Redcliffe City Corps. And it says, oh, lovely words in there that really made my day when I got that. I won't tell you who did that. Um, but isn't it nice that people uh, have got a ministry like that? So I'm going to keep those words of encouragement for the year in there. I'm sure it's big enough. Um, and I, and, I, and I delete and I throw away all the other ones. <laughs> no, I don't get very many abuses. Um, so why do I do this? Well, for some of you I know, I've had conversations with people that don't really have a systematic um, habit of prayer and I'd like to encourage you to think about doing it. Um, it could be a new thing. I've been doing things like this for years and I brought along an old book. 11 Boyd Road, Nunda. Daniel was seven and he's 45 now. So do the maths. So here, here's all the kind of stuff that over the years that I've written and some of them have been published because they start off as an idea in a prayer time and I want to read one of them just to prove to you that the Lord speaks to us in prayer. And this one says, Holiness is attainable. Three definitions. Holiness is a daily spiritual walk with God. Holiness is manner in the morning, manner in the evening, manner at supper time. I should put a quote on that, shouldn't I? Uh, holiness is my ongoing spiritual trek with God. And holiness is attainable. If you're a slave to your habits, would you be worth knowing? Think about that. Gee, I wrote that. If you're a slave to your habits, would you be worth knowing? You know, it is a quote that I found somewhere. But that's the kind of thing that... I've also got one on Jaguars um, that I cut out the pictures when you couldn't look at it on Facebook. So, uh, but I didn't bring that today. Only to say that I really felt challenged by what Karen said in her testimony so that I set, um, I set a new habit in my life to start my devotions at five o'clock in the morning. So... I started last Monday and 
I set my alarm at five o'clock, Ruth turned over and said, don't talk to me till seven o'clock. And I, uh, I had a very long band practice on Thursday night. We didn't finish till 20 to 10 or something. Um, and I gave myself a holiday on the next day. And you know what? Without an alarm, I woke up at 20 past five. Don't you hate it? Oh. So I was still able to keep my appointment with God. So if you don't have a regular appointment with God, um, all the things that were said earlier, there is Fairingham. Um, you can pray with the Lord every day. You can play while you're doing. You can pray while you're doing the ironing, or whatever. So I'd like to pray with you now and challenge you. You don't have to do things like I've done, but you might like to. And please. See me during morning tea, after we've all decided to leave the place. Um, devotional cards, and they're free today. Special offer, and no steak knives. Okay? So without any further ado, let us pray. Our loving Father, Lord, we thank you for the very fact that we can meet with the King of Glory every day. Lord, if we had an appointment with the King of England, we'd keep that appointment. And we have the opportunity of meeting with you face to face every day of every year. And so with this wonderful challenge, with all these prayers, uh, these prayer uh, topics through the scriptures that have been uh, organised for us, Lord, we pray that if it's possible, we might come on board and, uh, and join in this weekly commitment during the spring, during the summer, during the autumn and winter, and that we can look back on the blessings that, we, that you have given through our time with you. Lord, help us not to rob ourselves of the blessings that you have for us, the gifts that you've got ready for us, and we haven't actually kind of uh, tuned in to get those gifts. So bless us, we pray. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're going to evacuate, okay? Everybody, uh, according to as I said, could you evacuate to the assembly area? We have John will be here to help anyone and uh, Bill will be there to help anyone. The evacuation area, assembly area is in the car park. Please, older folk, keep in the shade if you need to. Thank you very much. Thank you. 